Hey guys. Hello, welcome to Wednesday night. The night of wed ness day. I'm gonna paint. Yay, paint. I'm gonna be using this stuff. This is uh, Genesis paint. I really love this stuff. It is basically polymer clay, but with pigment in it, which lets you do all sorts of neat stuff like bake it as you go. So you can do multi-stage baking. Um, you're not waiting for paint to dry. Um, it's completely uh, compatible with polymer clay. And what I really like about it is it's very easy to blend from a color to a non-color or between colors. Um, the other paint that's really good for that is oil paint, but uh, that takes forever to dry. And then just all the rigmarole you have to go through with your brushes and stuff. It's not as fun. This is a little sample kit that I got years and years ago. Um, and you can see how much I've used. Almost barely any. And for some reason, I thought I should go and get a million more gallons of it. And that was a waste. I'll never use this stuff in my life unless I start doing like professional one of a kind dolls. And that's not gonna happen. So I'm, I'm assuming you could paint over, you, well, I know you can paint opaque over um, other colors. For instance, this skin right here was just a very thin spattering of, uh, of paint over this color. So you can still see co some of it through there. If I really, I really wanted to, I could have covered it completely and opaquely, um, but it was just an undercoat, so I didn't care. Um, but what I've ever only used it for is um, tinting, basically. Putting, putting little rosy cheeks and noses and knuckles on um, already flesh-colored flesh. So I was doing some research over the past couple days, and I was surprised to learn that um, the thinning medium that the, the Genesis cells, let's see if I can find it. Okay, yeah, this is their, their thinning medium. Um, you only want to mix about uh, 40, a 40 to 60 mix. So 40% thinning and 60% pigment or, you know, the regular paint. Um, I've done a lot more than that. People have reported having problems with it setting up properly or remaining tacky after it's baked if the ratio is too much thinning medium. And what I like is like more closer to 90% media or thinning and 10% color because I'm just, I'm trying to be really subtle with it, right? I'm not trying to cover opaquely. Um, but, hello Dottie, hi Victoria, welcome. Uh, so yeah, other, uh, people have reported using um, liquid polymer clay as a thinning agent and I have not seen any dire warnings about mixing that super thin so I'm going to give all of these things a try well not only liquid Sculpey but also um, where do you go here we go um, clay softener using that as a as a thinning medium as well so that's great, we got lots of options to try. And since I made these little these little test pieces, I'll be uh, testing out these different these different mediums, these different thinners, figuring out what works best. Let's get some paper towels out because I inevitably end up getting this on stuff.
Uh, let me show you guys how the baked hand turned out. Um, so you can see the, the top of the hand where I got really thin. It does blend into the fingers really well. And you can see where the other clay is different. There's a very clear dividing line there, which I'm going to obfuscate with uh, dust and dirt and mud that's been kicked up by the fingers. So I don't think that's a, it's a huge deal for this particular piece. You know, if I was doing a baby doll or a fairy that had a different colored, you know, lower half than the upper half, that would be, that would be, you either got to paint over the whole thing or start over. So, um, yeah. Oh, the other thing I wanted to do was kind of um, work these nails a bit. I did not achieve what I hoped to, which was the quality of this nail, where you can see the little U-shaped pattern under there because I was so aggressive with giving them this this hoof like structure um, can I hit that I think well I'm gonna see what happens when I kind of carve down the nails and who knows maybe maybe that'll work maybe it won't if it doesn't work I can just redo the nails it's not a big deal it doesn't seem like baking it darkens the older stuff is significantly so and again that comes down to I mentioned this in a previous uh, stream uh, the more it's the Sculpey products Super Sculpey and I think Sculpey Living Doll don't quote me on this but I think all Sculpey products they get darker the longer you bake them so if you're doing multi bakes you need to be aware of that um, and other polymers don't have that much of an issue. The mix that I used had about 20 to 30 percent Sculpey, so it diminishes that darkening effect. Uh, where was I? I also need to figure out what... Um, oh! This was another... Another thinning medium. So wow, I've got, I got four different mediums to try here. I'm gonna have to find room for all of these on my little test subjects here. I'm trying to find a good brush to use for my test. The uh, because this is polymer based clay, it never dries. So, stuff on this brush is from, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. <laughs> it's still, still, uh, there's a word for that. Well, actually, let me try washing it with mineral spirits. If they, uh, are, do indeed work as a thinner, they should help me wash the brush. Yeah, looks like, yeah. Doing a good job. I don't mind a little bit of uh, brown being in there since I'm doing all skin pigments anyway. cameras rolling for my tutorial sound sync. Cover your ears for clapping. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Here we go. So, I'm going to point out four different thinners. Mineral spirits. 
Liquid Fimo clay softener and the actual thinning medium. Okay. I'm going to use four different cups so I can keep this all organized. the end really don't need much for this test This thinning medium here. JD, hello, yellow. I do, I do have a little bit of yellow going on here. See, yeah, in my hood. I got my Vault uh, 111. Wait, where? Here it is, Vault 111. Jacket on. Cause it is freezing in the garage again. Ozil 1605, hello, hello, welcome back. Right now I am testing different uh, thinners for this polymer clay paint. the most vibrant color and get an idea for how how mixed we can get this. How diluted. Diluted, not diluted. Mineral spirits. Oh, actually, let's not start with the mineral spirits because I already have um, this stuff on my spatula. Oh, 
probably should have done this on the back of the thing. So this is probably a, I don't know, 80-20 mix, maybe even a 90-10 mix. And uh, yeah, I've read that you don't want to go more than 40% of the um, thinner to the medium. Uh, so we'll see, we'll see. Touch. See how small that is? It's the tiniest hint. Yeah, that may not be enough of a hint. I seem to be having trouble getting it to um, suspend in the liquid. I'm getting little. Um, Flakes. Using a brush to mix up might help. But yeah, that's getting me to where it's it's definitely just a just a tent, which is what I want. Let's see what happens with this. And because this uh, liquid Fimo is so thick, uh, it's much easier to mix it in because it's a similar consistency to the paint. JD says, tuned in late. I thought you might be testing the Vaseline method I mentioned versus other ways to adhere unbaked clay to baked. It's for paint? How does that work? Uh, yeah, the the um, Sculpey softener worked so well for mixing. I just I just kept going with that for blending baked and unbaked. Uh, boy, Christian, that's a long name. Hey Josh, I'm from Colombia. I'm doing something similar as what you did on the ten class videos. I hope you still do this kind of videos are so helpful. Yep, I am working on the kind of sequel to that class, which is the intermediate uh, classes. And this is one of them about how to, how to use um, colored polymer clays and um, uh, tint them. And then the next one will probably be on making uh, teeth and the inside of mouths for, uh, for your sculptures. Kind of that two-part process. I still want this to be significantly less uh, vivid. It is, it is not thinning out uh, as significantly as I would like. So I'll just try adding a whole bunch. Oh, and to answer your question uh, more directly, JD, you can just check out the description. It 
pretty much explains what I'm doing. Just testing out this polymer paint called Genesis. Yeah, it still seems too bright. I'm gonna give it a try in that state and just see what happens. Mineral spirits is the next one to test. So I got just a little, little dab here. Yeah, it seems like the thinner the uh, the medium, the harder it is to get this thick, gooey paint to um, mix throughout it. it everywhere. Holy cow. <laughs> Can't seem to mix this without spattering it all over myself. good for what I'm trying to accomplish. I'm going to mix in a significantly uh, larger bit of the uh, Genesis medium because I want to actually see what happens when I get it at the ratio that uh, works visually for me. See if that tackiness is seriously a problem. paint goes incredibly far. With such a small little dab I mixed in at the beginning. Louise, okay. Um, I'm gonna move to my paintbrush for mixing in the rest of this. It's gonna take a big old giant blob out of here. Now we're getting more in the range of like, will this be like 99 parts uh, thinner to one part paint. seems like it's too um, 
too vivid or more vivid than I'd like. So I think I won't get an idea there of like how translucent that is. I've got four different ones to test, so I'll test them all in the same way. So I'm just curious to see if it acts any differently on the different brands of polymer clay. Amy. Okay. Um, I don't think I really need to use a different brush for each of these. I mean, it's the same pigment. It's just a different, different medium. So. It's not a 100% scientific test, but it's pretty close. Okay, so this is with the Sculpey Clay Softener. Now that gives a much, much more even tone across it. You can see it doesn't have the brush strokes and unevenness of the um, uh, Genesis thinner. That's, but that's definitely more what I'm going for, right? It's just a, a subtle, rosy blush. Damon, how ya, hey ya, hi ya. Bit green, hello. Hey Josh, I've never heard of polymer clay. Does it need to be baked? to dry like the clay. Yep, that's exactly what it is. Um, you can use a heat gun on it or you can throw it in your oven. I have even done the painting on the surface of the clay before the clay is, uh, is baked at all and I just bake both at the same time. So it's very cool that way. And it only needs to be baked for about five minutes. So it's easy to do to do multiple layers. Okay, I, I should probably start writing this down or I'm gonna forget the order I was doing these. So, this is Genesis. This is uh, Sculpey Clay Softener. And on this side, I'm gonna do uh, Fimo liquid, and then over here, mineral spirits. Genesis, SCS, mineral liquid, mineral spirits.
Amy says, isn't polymer clay just Sculpey? No, I mean polymer is it's a it's a type of plastic that gets can be suspended in a, a variety of mediums, and so if you if you bind it with really thick stuff, you get clay. If you bind it with really thin stuff, you get you get paint. Uh, okay, so this is the female liquid. Yes, yes. Let's make sure I'm putting it on the right part. Okay, so the Fimo liquid is thicker, like the Genesis, but it looks like um, I have it thinned out better, I think. The, the ratio of pigment to uh, thinner is more to my liking, so it's a nice subtle blush. The question will be, once it's baked, does the color stay exactly the same? It's super annoying to end up with uh, color shifting on you when you bake. And I can pile it on thicker or just keep kind of spreading it out to get it thinner, which is nice. And the brush strokes seem to disappear within a couple seconds of putting it on there, so that's nice. Nothing worse than brush strokes left in your clay if you're trying to do a realistic thing. Get green, you're using Sculpey right now? Cool, what are you making? I think you told me once before, I can't remember. Okay, and then finally... This is even going to be um, thick enough to see. Find out. Nope. That is too subtle. So I'm going to mix some more of the paint into it. I, I poured quite a bit more mineral spirits in here than the other thinners. So it makes sense. I'm going to need to get more pigment in there too get a similar ratio. Still a little too subtle. Subtlety is good, but when it's so subtle that even you as an artist can't perceive it well enough to know where you've put it and haven't, you'll run into trouble. Right. Oh, now that's interesting. Look, it's, uh, it's doing effectively a wash, so it's filling in the crevices with that color. That could definitely come in handy. I'm gonna, I think I'm going to do even more pigment though. Because on the flat, flat surfaces I'm still not seeing enough. in the oven for five minutes. See what happens. All 
Right now, you're doing teeth for your kobold. Cool. I ran into a bunch of kobolds in my last D&D uh, &D campaign. They're kind of wimpy, to be honest, but I can see how in the right scenario they could be cool. All right, I'll be right back. That is baking. Let's do some. Um, what is it you call when you go to a shop? To, oh, manicure. I'm gonna do some uh, manicure on this guy. So, what happens when I carve away? You can see down here. It uh, got a little bit burnt and squashed on the uh, floor of the aluminum foil tray that it was on. This is kind of the lowest part of the uh, sculpture and facing away from, you know, you'll probably be seeing the sculpture like so. This is the best part to test uh, techniques on. So I'm seeing what happens. When I shave it down, I'm hoping to get it thin enough to um, see some of the interesting texture of the nail bed that I sculpted beneath it. Right now, you can't really see any of that cool texture. It looks like it's not really um, ruining the surface at all. I thought it would change the color so significantly that it would be ruinous, but it doesn't seem like it. Looks like in the areas where I, I dig in with the blade and then I rip it off, that's where I get uh, some nicking, you know, different color. But as long as I'm actually just doing a nice smooth carving motion, it gives, keeps a, uh, a good, uh, it blends just fine. Fact, I should probably get a fresh exacto blade on here. So I have a little more control. And so when I inevitably slip off of this and onto my palm, I can just slice down to the bone instantly. That's my goal. Sculpture is realistic to the point of making me feel uncomfortable when you carve into it. Good job. <laughs> Just wait till it gets the paint on it. It's gonna look 
much more realistic once it's got some realistic skin tones, all that red and white and blues and stuff in there. Damon says, I always wear Kevlar gloves in my offhand when doing exacto work. Kevlar glove, you say? That's interesting. I don't know that I've ever seen one of those. It actually would stop an exacto blade from slicing through? Or are you joking? If you're joking, good one. You got me. If you're not, uh, tell me where I can get one. The downside to carving this is that I put all these nice rippled textures on the uh, nail, and now they're kind of going away. You can see them pretty well on this one. Uh, when the light hits it right, at least. Yeah. But I am getting a better uh, translucency doing it this way. Still, I can't even tell if I'm starting to see the nail bed texture yet. I don't know if I will be able to tell until it's too late and I've actually dug through the nail. Although if I do that, then um, I can always, pretty sure I can just patch it up with more translucent uh, Sculpey. When I bake it with the paint, it should, it should be all fixed, so. I'm not incredibly nerve-wracked like I was last time where I was worried about running out of too much clay. Damien says, not joking, if you figured out how to let me post links or just search Kevlar gloves on Amazon or Google. It saved me a trip to urgent care more than once. Sounds nice. Yeah, I had to go to urgent care for this one because I was pulling a sheet of um, brass out of the Colossus leg and I was pulling and pulling and twisting it and it would not come out and then finally it just like my hand slipped over it and just sliced it down to the bone. Super lucky it didn't like hit nerves because this finger is super important to me you guys. Although I know an animator who is missing the top half of his right index finger, and he seems to do all right. Go ahead and record some of this nail work. Oh, for anyone just joining um, who didn't see it since the last bake, here's the, all the skin is, is finely baked on here. So you can see the transition between the top of the hand and the fingers is pretty, 
pretty seamless. If you look really closely in some spots, you can see some, some mucky areas. And then the material that I used on the palm is definitely, <laughs> definitely different. And that's because I mixed white into some clay to, uh, to match the color. But the white is totally opaque. And so it changed the translucency of the skin to the point where it definitely stands out. And I mentioned earlier I'm going to take care of that just by coating it with dust and dirt and mud from all the trampling around this hand goes. Less than $10, you say, Damon. Sign me up. Yeah, I'll uh, probably order some of those right after I get off here. I think I could submit this footage um, as a portfolio to get a job at a nail salon. I actually seriously considered uh, airbrushing nails for a, I mean, not as a career, but as a job for a while when I was going to school. Amy says, anything where people hurt their hands is instant cringe. Yeah, I agree. David says, oh, I can tell you some stories. I have lots of scars. Bottom kind of looks like waterlogged skin. Yeah, it does, doesn't it? <laughs> like dead waterlogged skin. Okay, now I want to see how well can I thin out the underside of the nail to get it more realistic before I accidentally break it? That's the question. As always, when you're trying to give the illusion of a very thin thing that you're sculpting, like, you know, the edges of robes or scarves or sleeves or nails, you can always cheat by having it thick lower down as long as the edge comes to a, a thinner point. Uh, it's probably been five minutes, huh? I should go get the thingy out of the oven. Okay. I'll be right back, guys. Uh, keep an eye on this hand and make sure that it doesn't come to life. And wait for me so that when I come back in the door, it jumps on my throat and strangles me. Make sure it doesn't do that, okay? I don't want it to do that. All right, thank you for keeping an eye on that for me. I'm gonna let that cool off for a bit. He 
And it says people might have somewhat different coloration on the front and back of their hands, so it wouldn't be unrealistic to even have that color show through a bit. And that song was dramatic, yep. Wedding Party makes very dramatic songs. Uh, yeah, I would have been way happier if this little part here didn't end up having more of <laughs> more of this tone mixed in. So it's kind of a it's kind of a hot mess right there. If it was consistently this color on the palm, yes, I would be I'd be much happier. But um, yeah, this line is the one that I'm most worried about hiding. I'm not not sure. I'm assuming that when I when I do the dabbing of the red and the white and the olive tone over that it will ameliorate that pretty significantly back here is pretty bad too but mostly I'm just really happy that all these areas all around here it's it's seamless looks like the same skin so mission mostly accomplished I think I got the illusion of thinness pretty good on on this guy. Does that look like a pretty th thin nail to you? I mean, it looks thicker than than my nail, but it's all right. I mean, it's a it's pretty it's it's got to be battle worn and calloused and. I don't know. Can your nails thicken up if you uh, if you work them hard enough? I don't. I don't think so. How do flamenco guitarists do it? Now this guy's going to be hard because I can already see there's kind of a crack across here. So I'm going to have to go at this pretty cautiously. Damon says the hand tried to crawl away. Oh, thank you for stopping it, though. Uh, Amy says, what's with the little rip in the skin at the top? Uh, that was just like a... I had an accident on this one, and I started filling it in with muscles and, and bone, and I just thought that was kind of cool, and it made sense that when you're jousting on hands, that'd be a pretty natural part that uh, uh, Lance would end up stabbing in there so it'll just be a nice a nice uh, battle battle damage on the hand mount Amy I know I ask you this every time um, lately but have you finished your wait it wasn't LSAT what was it whatever that awful test you were testing for the past three months did you do it did you win did you get first place is it like is it like the goblet of fire where you have to 
swim with squid monsters and like solve riddles with egg puzzles. I assume that's what it's like because I don't think I took it. It's really, <laughs> it's really hard to hold this hand in place, apply just the right amount of pressure up on this nail as I'm applying down with the X-Acto knife, and keep it at the angle that I need. I almost guarantee I'm going to end up snapping this off. And it'll happen right after the point where I'm like, uh, you know, it's close enough, it's fine, I should just leave it. And then I'll be like, no, I could just do one more pass at it. And that's when it'll break. I need to also carve the surface of it. Oh, what happens if I just scrape? It might be better. I bet you actually like real uh, a nail buff or whatever file and buff would probably work really well on this. But I do not have those things.
Yeah, I think that's fine for this one. This this one's gonna have a little kind of helmet thing covering the front of it anyway. David says, does the clear stuff take to sanding well or does it white out the nails? Um, I think I think with a fine enough sandpaper it would work uh, fine. I don't know that it would be, or I feel like it would be slower to do the whole sandpaper route, but in order to get the significant amount of um, removal that I'm getting, I would have to use pretty coarse stuff and then I would have to, you know, go down, down, down the, uh, the grain fineness, um, which would probably not be too big a deal if these were, at, you know, like real nails that are just kind of a nice round uh, surface, but because these have this odd, um, hoof-like thing to them, the, the amount of time sanding I think would be onerous. Yeah, Dottie, you want to talk about um, jack of all trades, master of none? I could, I could say that I've done manicures now, and I'm very, very bad at them. My tool set is limited to X-Acto blades. I don't know how many people would be lining up to get the Josh Foreman X-Acto blade manicure. And I'm still not getting, and I don't know why, this is really frustrating. Look how awesome that nail is with that nice little curve on it. And I did the same thing on the nail beds to this, except for the fact that they're hoofy. But I still would think I'd be able to see through enough to make that out, and I'm not. And that's making me frustrated. Haven says, I kind of want to see one of these hands, but with bright pink fingernails. Amy agrees that would be great. I mean, more for finishing and try to put uh, ridges on the surface. Oh, for the sanding. Um, yeah, not a bad idea, although I'm kind of really liking this. The smooth look that I'm getting for some reason it's just the 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 sheen on them is looks so realistic I kind of don't want to mess with that now
Ah, okay, finally. If you can tell right there, I broke through to the nail bed underneath. Thought that would happen if I kept getting there, but I, I need to know, like, why am I not seeing the definition of the nail bed under there? And since I actually got to the nail bed, and I'm not seeing the, uh, the nice striation that I sculpted into the nail bed, I don't know if it's because of how thick, because this is definitely exactly the same clay that I used on the other nail. Um, maybe when you bake it thicker, it ends up more opaque all the way through? Either way, we'll find out what happens when I put a, a thin coat of translucent over that to fix that. Okay, almost done with nails. Now that I know that um, getting them thinner isn't actually accomplishing what I want, um, I don't have a lot of incentive to spend a lot of time on this guy. I'm just going to kind of even out the surface. He says maybe the hoof shape is thicker in some areas and thinner in others, which obscures the detail below. Yeah, that is probably a good conclusion to draw. I could have worked harder to make sure that there was a, like, a very precise thickness of... Uh, the translucent over it which I think just kind of happened naturally on the other piece because it was just a matter of you know squashing it into place but anyway okay that's cool let's check out our paint shall we Gotta do another sound sync real quick. Alrighty, what do we got here? These two got glued together because they were pressed together in the oven. You can see what happens there. Okay, so let's look at the, um, where did I put it? Here we go. 
Just kidding. Here we go. Okay, thinning medium first. So, definitely seeing the brush strokes. I am not feeling any tackiness. Maybe that's something that develops over time, but as it is, it seems re really great. And again, this was a mixture of close to 99 uh, um, thinner to 1% paint. And it looks pretty consistent across all the different um, brands of clay. Looks a bit shinier on this one, not sure why. Okay. Uh, let's see, that was the Genesis. Okay, the Sculpey, yes. The Sculpey Clay Softener is the next one we're gonna look at. And it pretty much just completely ran off. You can see it pooled up there, but that's where I painted it on. It's, it's pretty much gone. I uh, can kindly ma kind of make it out there. Seems that um, it's just it's so runny. Uh, there's a little bit of the pigment there, which is great. But again, and I'm getting this not nice little broken up residue and that seems to be pretty consistent across them. So. That is something to be aware of. Uh, Fimo liquid. This is the next one. Okay, that's going to be on this side. Also dripped down considerably, collected here. Um, but it is very, very well adhered to it. <laughs> this is not coming off. So that's cool. Good to know. Uh, yep, kind of drip down there. No, pretty consistent again. And then finally, the odorless mineral spirits. That, uh, it's hard to tell if the inconsistent surface, like it's a little cloudy, is just because I was sloppily blasting it on there, or if that's a matter of the pigment settling down, not like not being mixed very thoroughly with the uh, thinner. But yeah, you can see I'm getting that kind of consistently as well. Little bits of, of crumbles from it. So, and here's where it, remember it washed into these little gaps and it does not give me the nice consistent um, kind of a wash effect that I would want. So, ah, I'm trying to think what's best then. I think I'm going to rule Genesis out just because that those brush strokes are too, too gnarly. Um, the liquid Fimo is good, but not, the, the fact that it, that it runs so much is problematic, but then these other two methods, getting those little blobbies are really bad. So, there is a fifth option that I have yet to try because I didn't have any on hand, and they didn't have any at the store when I went there, um, which is, I was reading a website where a, a painter was um, talking about his experience with a variety of, of these uh, thinners for Genesis paints, and his favorite was Kato uh, transparent clay or liquid with something. I can't remember what it's called. Anyway. So that should get here in the next day or two, and I'm gonna try that one before I do any serious work on Mr. Hand here. However, I think it is not risky to do some of my um, obvious color stuff, such as coloring in the, uh, the gore at the top of the hand. Um, 
I think I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna try a wash of brown on the bottom, just because that's a great place to experiment. And this is gonna have the most dirt and uh, dust kicked up onto it. So I might as well give that a try now. And I think what I'll use for that is... Actually, one thing I didn't try was what happens when I rub. Do I get a significant... I, I thought maybe with the mineral spirits because it's not a polymer clay product like all the rest of these are. I thought it might present some problematic issues with uh, rubbing off, but it doesn't seem to. I think it's just that the polymer in the paint, when it comes in contact with the polymer of the sculpture, it bonds, like serious bonding. Uh, Damon says, spirits look best to me. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of feeling like that's a good one to to work on first. Oh, actually, one thing I think I want to try real quick. Just as a test. Where's my... Okay, I've got this really, this really gnarly, crappy old brush, which is great for getting a dappled look. So I'm going to mix this pigment in a little bit more. In fact, I might as well grab some pigment from some of the others. I'm going to try some dappled red on there and see what happens. Probably not much of anything because it's so thin. But on the other hand, uh, on the other hand, oh hey, on the other hand, Josh Foreman, you're a genius. I have another hand to practice this stuff on. What am I practicing on my main hand for? Josh, you're an idiot. Okay. So this is actually. Turns out that's too saturated for doing uh, the, the model pinky red that occurs on hands. But I'm curious what happens if I stab it on somewhat randomly and then pat it off. I end up with a nice modeled random look. I kind of do. I don't like that it's settling in the cracks, like inside the cracks of a hand you're not getting a more saturated color. But, um, sorry, let me get this better in view. Damon says, or try mixing two different thinners. Yeah, um, totally valid. I'm going to try the Kato next, because um, if that's just like turns out to be the superior solution, there's no need for more uh, random flailing attempts at stuff. And on the final piece, I'm not going to be putting this on truly randomly. I'm going to be looking at where where it tends to be more red, where it tends to be more white or yellow, and uh, applying it more deliberately. Right now I'm just kind of getting a feeling for slopping it on and dabbing it off.
looks like I can suck it out of those cracks pretty easily, so that's good. Time for more drama. Drama, drama. Um, I'm gonna see what happens when I mix a little yellow. I've already got this mineral spirit with really old brown. Let's see what that looks like. I got it. Let's well use it. Definitely don't mind as much if the brown is getting into the cracks. In fact, I wonder if this might be a good way to um, kind of do some subtle shading. This might be a good coat to, to put down first for the modeling of it and then go in. By, and I mean, by modeling, I mean bringing out the three-dimensional characteristics. The other modeling is, do, is doing the modeled, uh, you know, reds and yellows and pinks. One thing interesting, I've got some brown on my palette here. Let's see what happens. I actually just grab some paint straight up. So in this little divot here would be a great place to get a little bit darker. And because there's already so much thinner on the surface, you can kind of dab it and work it in there. Damon says, looks so orange to me. Cracks, and JD says, cracks look like cuts now. Sandy says, hello. Hi, Sandy. Alita says, hi. Hi, Alita. And uh, uh, hello, everyone. Um, yeah, the color on my screen does look a little orange. I, I definitely have the um, set the white balance set pretty low because it's hard to see the detail on the skin when it's up at normal. Let me try it here and see if that helps. It still looks kind of more saturated on the screen than it does in real life. But the neat thing is once you get the, the dirt in the divots, then when you wipe over it, you're wiping off the highlights and you kind of get a nice, a nice effect, I think. And if the dirty divots are too much, you just kind of touch it with the tip of a paper towel and it wicks, wicks away however much you want. Yeah, so depending on how dirty I want this hand to look, I, I think what I'm going to do is, like I was saying, the bottom is going to be really mucky and dirty, and then the top will be a little more clean. See if doing around around the crevices is a good idea.
feeling super great about that. I can't believe I had another hand to experiment on and I was going straight on to working on my primary piece. And I literally had to say on the other hand to remind myself I had another hand. Thanks TV tropes. You know that trope where a character says something random and then the protagonist is like, you're brilliant! and they take that one word or whatever they said out of context and they apply it to the problem and solve it. That's what I did before myself. That's how good I am. David says, my orange was referring to the first colors, not the brown, just to make sure we're talking about the same. I like the brown. Okay. Yeah, actually, um, some of these thinners, so this one in particular looks quite a bit more orangey than this. Um, Mm -hmm. Maybe it's just a matter of how dense they are. But you're right, this orange is looking, or th this red is looking more orange than I want. Um, which means I just mix a little bit of blue into it to, to bring it to a cooler red instead of a warmer red. In fact, you know, we're practicing stuff. Let's Let's try that right now, shall we? I happen to have some blue right here. It's probably too much. Oh god, way, way too much. So now I'm getting a maroon. But, you know what, let's find out what happens when we put it on the skin. Oh, well, that's interesting. I accidentally spattered some of that blue on there. It's going on a little, a little too regular there. Which kind of makes me curious. Let's say I do completely screw up what I'm trying to do. If I go in with a brush that's pretty much loaded with mineral spirits and just kind of scrub it down, can I bring it back to close to original? Right now it actually, it kind of looks like my wife's fingers. She has Reinards? Reinards? I don't know. Something that makes her hands uh, look like corpse hands from time to time. You get purple and white and yellow. Yeah, I think I need to turn this back down to get so you can actually see the color a little better. Yeah. <sighs> So having all those colors on and then dabbing them off, I am getting nice irregularity, which which is really important. Um, I don't know that I'm getting it in the right places, in the right proportions, but this is great practice for before I go to my final one. Let me try, let's see, was this? Gulpy was the other kind of goodish stuff. Now I've got a little bit, actually let me try this, like, barely touch the brush into the blue. Let's see what happens.
Well, definitely not orange anymore. JD says, my wife has that too. Her hands turn blue when they get cold. It's crazy. Yeah, sometimes her hands won't even be cold. They'll just change colors. Damon, blue spatters are not just magic boogers. Beauty says, I think the maroon is a happy little accident. It gives it a more necrotic look. Yeah, I'm not sure how dead I want the hand to appear. I, I kind of like the idea that it's a living, that it's still got blood pumping through its veins. Um, and it's like a living beast under his control. But I think the, the base coat of the skin is that natural kind of ivory yellow that a pasty Caucasian like me has when the, when the skin is pulled tight, which is super great because that means I can just go in with, with mineral spirits and rub over it and all the raised up areas are going to naturally get that, that color. So. The question is, can I go in and add red in just the right amount that I want without getting the um, that wash effect where it's seeping into the edges? I might be able to do it if I use a little bit thicker mix. But I mean, maybe just going in and sucking out all the the precious life fluids um, is the way to go. I don't know how much that's actually leaving over though. So let's try this. Just go straight paint. Tiny dab of straight paint. Apply it where I want it. It's already obviously nice and um, damp from the mineral spirits but then I do that and then kind of blend it around the edges Definitely leaving more red behind, but that the the straight red is is just too saturated. Uh, one thing, since brush strokes don't matter when you're working on a very textured surface, or don't matter as much. Let's try some more of this. Let's just say we want to do knuckles and fingertips a little more red. around these pooched up areas too.
The other thing that's great about this paint as opposed to acrylics is you have an infinite amount of time to dink around with it. It's not drying on you. It's just gonna sit there and you could mix and remove and add and on and on. So this desaturated red on the knuckles seems to be pretty good. Then go in and get a different paper towel. Because it's a little bit thicker, it's not doing that thing quite as much where it's like just seeping into the cracks and then not really coloring the skin around it. but I'm assuming it's also not going to wick out of the cracks because it's more of a gel-like medium than um, the super liquidy mineral spirits were. Over here I'm getting a lot better, subtler effects. Which is making me happy. This finger is just kind of a hot mess because I've gone over it so many times, so many <laughs> different colors. That's good. It's good to practice and let's see how much we can pull it back from the brink. away the highlight on that vein that definitely looks like a thing that that happens like parts of the knuckle I think where it's hitting the you know the, the bone is pulling it tight uh, gets that gets that yellow ivory and then around it I'm seeing kind of purpley red which means I can come in with my um wait was this this was my marine it's kind of touching the little areas here and there Some, some of that maroon with the um, Genesis medium to get a little thicker. Although, let's see, what was the other stuff? The, um, ah, the FL, Fimo Liquid. Let's see what happens if I make some maroon out of that.
Damon says, anyone else's audio getting skippy? Now I can hear myself fine, Damon. Uh, Amy says, you know what, one of the best practical benefits of being an artist, being able to know shortcuts to make very simple things look fancy and time consuming, like brush pen calligraphy. Yep. Damon says, definitely getting some kind of pulse. Hmm. Well, my uh, little indicator when I'm not streaming well is showing green. It's not showing yellow or red, so it might be on your end. that brown that I put in really thin, it's doing that thing where it's breaking up into little uh, granular spots. So I think what I'm learning is that, um, is that mineral spirits, when you thin it down, the pigment down that much, it's going to give you a, a blotchy and consistent look. See, I've only ever done this paint on like very smooth skin. I haven't done it on the wrinkly stuff. So having it thicker on, you know, cheeks and stuff, like watch this. I can do a really, a really easy um, ramp from like no color to color, just like that, right? Looks great, super easy and fast. But once the little cracks are part of the, uh, equation it gets a lot trickier I'll have to think about this a little bit and, and I'll I'm gonna try that Kato clay so I think this is a good place to call it a day um, I guess one more quick thing I want to try is throwing a little yellow on the nail. Let's see how that looks. That one, I'm totally cool with it only being in the cracks, but mostly being in the cracks. Sounds like I'm talking into a fan, huh? Yeah, my CPU is fine. It's like 13%. Uh, my bit rates are high and green, like in the 3000s. You think it's the microphone? The music sounds fine, huh? I mean, it's just that it's my Logitech webcam. That's the mic I've been using all along, so that's odd. I think you guys are all just lying. That's the easiest explanation. Stop lying, you guys.
Yeah, I'm gonna mix brown into it actually to um, use thick stuff. Yeah, I can get a pretty nice ramp there really easily. So that's cool. Anyway, yeah, this is great practice. I think um, I'll probably do a little more practice and probably be doing the final, or starting the final paint this weekend. So uh, yeah, join me on Saturday or Sunday and uh, we'll, we'll do on, on the other hand. So until then, bye. 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 Sorry I sound weird, guys. I'll try to sound less weird next time. <laughs>